it got really, really hot. So hot, resulting in a hole that ended up being a blowtorch. We're taking a walk today in the forest, Dombois, to gather some birch, some birch bark that we're going to be making some birch oil out of. It's going to be a few hour process and we're going to take you along from start to finish. There are two different types of birch tree on our property. They both belong to the genus Betula. There is the paper birch, which comes, the bark comes off in larger chunks and it's usually a whiter color. Then there's the yellow birch. The, the bark is a little bit more yellow and it comes off in smaller, smaller chunks, smaller pieces. We have multiple uses planned for birch trees on our property. We plan to tap some of the birch trees to make sap in order to get birch syrup. And we also are going to harvest some of the chaga mushrooms that grow on birch trees on the property. You can use those for multiple purposes, including medicinal and making teas. Now there are sustainable ways of taking birch bark off of live trees. And for some purposes it's necessary, like as if you're going to make use the bark for something like making baskets or uh, boats. However, for this purpose, for use, making birch oil, it's okay to use bark off of dead trees. And in my opinion, it's the most sustainable way if you're not an expert at removing the bark. The bark is the first line of defense for the tree. So best way to remove birch bark from a dead tree is to take your knife, make a slit through the bark, then use your knife to go under the bark peel it up from the tree and then you can just peel it away in one big piece. To make and collect the birch oil, you get a can, this is just a soup can, put it in the hole, then you take a tin, we have a pot that we've drilled a hole in the bottom, I also attached a canning jar lid as a lip, and so you'll backfill around the can, you'll put the pot over top of that, fill it with the birch bark, put on the lid, I've added these to tighten the lid on. Uh, we might also put a rock on here. And then you build a fire around it and cook it for several hours until all the oil has distilled out of the birch bark. So I'm going to pack the birch bark that we collected as densely as I possibly can into the pot. A lot of people that I've seen online have uh, rolled the, uh, the bark in order to get as much in there as possible. So you could also just kind of haphazardly like stick it in there. Goal is to get as much and as dense of a pack in there as possible. As I mentioned earlier, the bark is the first line of defense for the trees against uh, pathogens and insects. and It's not only a physical barrier, but it also has chemicals in it that the plant, the tree grows, and it puts these chemicals in it to uh, as, act kind of like as an insecticide or a fungicide. And it's these chemicals or hormones that are in the, the bark that supposedly give it its medicinal purposes. Um, there is salicylic acid in there, which is supposed to help as a germicide and an antibacterial properties. And there's also anti-inflammatory properties inside of it. Now, as a scientist, I am naturally skeptical of 
of any claims like this. However, there is quite a lot of indigenous knowledge surrounding this, which makes it have a lot more credibility in my eyes. And there's actually a, a partnership between an indigenous professor and a chemist at, I think it's the University of Cape Breton, where they were given money to study the, the medicinal properties in this bark. They just got the money, I think it was like last summer. So I'm not too sure if anything has come out of that yet, but I think that that is great and it'll be really cool to see what comes out of that study. So people use this birch bark oil to treat things like psoriasis and eczema. As I said, again, as an anti-inflammatory. Uh, you can also use the bark for non uh, medicinal purposes. You can use it, um, people use it to waterproof um, and treat leather. They use it, uh, boil it down a little bit further and make a tar out of it and they use that to like a glue or like a, like a, t it's a, it's a tar so you can use it to attach. For example, um, many, many thousand years BC they, they f uh, found arrowheads that were attached using birch tar. And they also uh, have found evidence of teeth marks in it, like they used it as like a gum. My purpose for using it will be to make, I want to make an oil, so and to uh, combine it with uh, like a carrier oil, like a cast, castor oil, in order to make an oil, a topical oil, to treat things like uh, eczema. So that's probably about as much as I can fit in there. Um, we'll see how this works out and we'll see how much oil we get out of this. What am I doing? Get it. Now I'm gonna put the can in this hole and bury around it. Uh, I'm just gonna put a little lid on it so and push it down just to prevent any of this stuff from getting in the can. A lot of the other videos of this I've I've seen they've they haven't done that. And I thought this would be a nice simple addition. Perfectly clean. Next step is to put your pot on top. Make sure it's level. And then you're gonna build a fire around it. Birch bark is actually one of nature's best fire starters as well. So I'm gonna spread it around the outside of the pot. Now this stuff is from the yellow birch. And then I'm gonna use these sticks to build kind of like a teepee. fire going now but we'll have to keep feeding this for another two to three hours until all the oil has uh, distilled out of the birch bark and we basically only have ash and char left. So 
So we let this go for about two hours. It got really, really hot. So hot melting this, this handle off, resulting in a hole that ended up being a blowtorch. So we'll see what we got. I'm gonna start by clearing off some of this, this coal ash. So we might have left it go a little long, it's pretty thick in there, but we got about maybe a quarter cup of uh, oil out of that. Now we're just going to let it cool off and we'll put it in a jar and, and show you what it looks like. Now let's see what's left inside the can. Just ash. Now this is your uh, final product. It doesn't really look like much, but you treat this like an essential oil. All recipes really only call for a few drops. So what we have here looks like about 50 milliliters. I'll be able to scrape a bit more out of there. And now we're ready to get creative with this. 